subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. So welcome back. Today we're discussing part two of should you buy Apple or Samsung in 2018. The reason I'm making this video again, as I mentioned in the first one, is because Samsung's going to update the Note 8 to the Note 9 very soon. So you're going to have another flagship option. You're also going to have the Note 8 that's going to be decreased in price. The S9s are already coming down in price a little bit in certain areas and you can get the S8 for much cheaper now and the S8 Plus. The iPhone 10 will be updated to the iPhone 10 Plus and an LCD iPhone. And the point of this video is so you can kind of know where you're going here this year if you're going to go with Samsung or Apple. Now, if you didn't watch the first part of this series, we talked about the hardware in detail. I will leave that link down below in the comment or the description area of this video or up in a card should appear right about now and you go check that out. But let's get the obvious out of the way first and that is the software update. So this one is basically most of you know that, okay, I'm gonna get an Apple phone because I get software updates. But one thing I wanna mention is that after using both Apple and Samsung phones for quite some time here, the software on an iPhone doesn't really change all that much, you know, you know, at least in those two years of using it, you might get, you know, a little bit of a difference here in bug fixes and, you know, security updates, a few new features added. But from all the way since iOS 10, even going here to iOS 12, there's not really that much on the surface that looks any different. So getting a Samsung phone, you will get a lot more security updates these days than you used to. And you will get at least two to three major upgrades. The S7 just got Oreo, for example. Now, the problem, though, is that Samsung doesn't bring these updates quite as quickly. So they kind of leave you hanging for some months here. And that's not Samsung's fault. That's because you have carriers involved. You have Google involved. It's not tightly controlled like Apple's experience on the iPhone. However, there's so many features on a Samsung that even when you do get these updates, you don't really change the experience at all. So neither of these experiences change too much whether you get updates or not. So I don't really make my decision anymore based just on that. However, one thing I do wanna mention is that if you're gonna keep a phone for four or five years, not most people do this, but if you're one of those long, long-term users, then the iPhone is definitely gonna be updated longer. The iPhone 5S is even getting iOS 12. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you're gonna keep a phone four to five years. But by then, your phone is pretty much not even usable fast anymore. So I don't know why you would keep a phone that long. Okay, so before we go any further with software here, I wanna talk about FaceTime and iMessage. I'm not gonna cover this too in depth because it's not offered on the Android devices. Now, there's a common misconception that, you know, there's no way to video chat unless you have an iPhone FaceTime. It is scary crazy how many people think you cannot video chat unless you're using an iPhone, but it still exists. And, you know, people don't know that things like Google Duo exist, Tango exists, Skype exists. There's many, you know, applications that can do video chat similar to FaceTime and offer some better features. Now, iMessage is just between Apple users and we know how that thing works. Apple's never going to bring it to an Android device. It's just one thing to keep people buying their hardware, which is nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, while this is very easy to use on the iPhone and you have to have an iPhone to use it, you don't have to buy an iPhone to do things that are similar. So keep that in mind when buying an Android and iPhone. But if the people you know that you're chatting with don't want to have an open mind enough to go ahead and try something new, you know who those people are in your life, then the iPhone, if they're using an iPhone, they're likely not going to download anything and be like, just iMessage me, just FaceTime me, and not even act like something exists. So it really comes down to a person's level of open-mindedness, I feel like, when it comes to trying out different video chat. But if you want to do video chat and messages, and most of your people are on iMessage and FaceTime, Apple's the way to go. But if they don't really care about those services, they don't really use them, then this is not really a disadvantage to Android at all and if they're open minded enough to use Google Duo and other applications then you could be doing the same things on both platforms. Okay, so let's quickly discuss minimalization factor versus customization factor on both iPhone and Apple in the software department. So, I feel like Apple still has a more minimal feel to their software. It's just a grid of icons and you do have no app drawer, nothing like that. Widgets are off to the left and that's about it. I think it's the better phone for those of you who don't really want to 
customize things like that but over here on samsung you do have an app drawer and then you do have you know you can do this pinch stuff right here you can go through your screens you can go ahead and just hold down add widgets themes customize the size there's a lot more to remember with a samsung phone on the other hand you know samsung also has the ability to set your own custom home screen so if you want movie night for example i made this little widget with the s pen watching movies checking out movie reviews on letterbox i can make this my home screen for the night because i know i'm doing movie night you can't do that on an iphone you're always going to go back home over here to your main screen which is the first one on an iphone so keep that in mind i think if you're an extremely busy person who wants a no bs experience on your phone then the apple phone is going to be the way to go because there's just not much to remember it's just a grid of apps but if you're a person who really wants to tightly control how you use your phone and you need a, a tool like a computer in your hand that you can really just you know specifically tailor to your needs then samsung is definitely going to be the way to go because you can put apps wherever you want on the screen i wish apple would do this but they have it you can put them down at the bottom to the side you can make them smaller you can make them bigger this is where samsung phones really excel so both are very productive experiences but i think you can get a little more productive on a samsung phone than an apple phone whereas apple phone works very well with the mac and ipad experience so quickly brushing over widgets so on the samsung device the widget experience is just so much uh, more in depth than the Apple experience and most applications on the Play Store will give you some sort of widget now there is definitely an improvement to the apple experience you actually can use widgets on apple devices now they are hidden off to the left and this goes more with that clean experience you want from an iphone so i think it's a little cleaner looking for the iphone device but i feel like the ability to put a widget where you want it is actually more useful because a widget is supposed to be you know specifically where you want it to see it at all times that's the point i feel of a widget and sliding over to the left scrolling down trying to find it is not quite as useful as the way android does it here where it's like right there front and center where you need it at all times that's to me that's the point of a widget to have it right in your face so you don't forget things on that widget okay so let's move on to multitasking here so on an iphone it's a mobile first experience you really only can use one app at a time on the iphone and that's not a problem to most people that keeps it clean keeps it minimal you don't have to you know worry about apps being you know side by side but at the same time um i think a lot of iphone users specifically the plus users have been wanting to see a split at least a split screen mode you don't have to do all this extra stuff samsung does which i'm going to show you right here where you can put applications in a pop view as well as split them so here's the pop view mode Let's go ahead and open up another one. You could put as many, I, I, feel, I believe it's like four or something like that you can put in here, maybe more, but you can split these up here on the Samsung and do things in the background, it still works. It's like a full blown computer right here when you do stuff like this. Now, if you go ahead and hit this little icon up here, on the side you can see that you have a whole app list of things that you can split here with your calendar for example so if you want that true multitasking experience samsung is the way to go you're not getting that on an iphone and i'm not sure if apple is going to do that at all they didn't bring it in ios 12 and uh, that was pretty shocking but maybe we'll see a split screen on apple one day but today is not the day and if you want a true multitasking experience samsung with their six gigs of ram on their flagship phones can definitely handle it as well samsung is the way to go in software right here okay talking about software again let's talk about 3d touch versus the various shortcuts on android so for example if you go into clock on the iphone 10 you could create alarm start stopwatch start timer here on, on the samsung you can just add an alarm it's not quite as feature packed but samsung is starting to put in some application you know shortcuts in there if you just hold down for example on the calendar you can go ahead and add event add a task and here you can only add a event for the uh, calendar for the iPhone. So there is similar features now, at least in the core apps, but 3D Touch works in third-party apps as well for the iPhone, which you don't see on the Samsung device. For example, there's Instagram. Let's go ahead and try that here. You can only select items, add it to the home or uninstall. Also, if we go into something like power saving, that would be basically the equivalent of hitting the battery icon here in the 3D Touch. So most of those core things you're gonna do there's a way to do it on a Samsung device. I think that the 3D Touch solution is a little bit more elegant, but you can still do it here. So there's no real advantage to me to having 3D Touch 
on your device because most of the time I don't even remember to use those features and I think that it's more of a marketing sell than it is a super useful feature. So comparing the settings menus on these devices in the software, I think they're both rather even here. They both have a search bar up at the top to get into your settings. I like the bold like settings icon up there or the, the typeface on the iPhone. And I feel like these uh, these bolder like little icons to show you which setting you're in are a little bit more easy for the eye to recognize on the iPhone as well. Whereas these are very modern and clean looking for Samsung, but they're not quite as dark and filled. So I think your eye will naturally tend to recognize this bolder look here for the settings on the iPhone versus these settings for Samsung. But they're laid out very similarly. Sometimes I think, you know, Apple hides certain things they shouldn't hide, like the the auto brightness for example you can just go into samsung tap this little arrow auto brightness is right there for apple you have to go into general you have to go in accessibility display accommodations turn on auto brightness right there so some things can be a little bit convoluted over here but same thing with the samsung you can get a little bit overwhelmed with the abundance of features that are are in sending settings here for Samsung, but really they're about the same. So when it comes to their settings menu, finding things is very similar on both. This is not a reason to choose one or the other over in software. Okay guys, so next up is theming versus jailbreaking. Now these iPhones are not jailbroken, but I just wanna discuss how, you know, with Apple, it's gonna be time consuming to jailbreak your device and finding a video or finding an online website that's gonna show you how to do this, it's gonna take you time. On the Samsung, all you have to do is go ahead, hit that uh, home screen, go ahead and go into themes and you could just theme it out whatever. You can also support some of these developers of these themes and uh, help them out as well for supporting their work. So Samsung doesn't care if you theme out your phone. They're not trying to control your experience and how your phone looks. Now, uh, that, that's again, this is in the customization factor. And a lot of people say, well, just get an iPhone, jailbreak it, and you're good to go. But jailbreaks are sometimes broken with updates and they take a while for new ones to come out. So it's always going to be that way when it comes to jailbreak an iPhone. And, and Apple, works very hard to make sure you cannot jailbreak their software and eventually there may be one day probably not because people always find a way but there might be one day where you can't jailbreak your iphone and you could potentially cause some issues when doing this so if you want to theme it out just get a samsung it's so much easier and you could change it whenever you want the average user is not going to have no complexity issues figuring out how to theme out their Samsung, whereas trying to jailbreak is a whole nother story for people who really want to spend some time theming out the iPhone. So I think Samsung wins in the theming department, hands down. Okay, so let's get on to Hey Siri versus the Google Assistant. So you've seen it just activated right there. Um, Siri and Google Assistant are worlds apart. The Google Assistant uses basically the entire Google ecosystem of search versus Siri's more, you know, Wolfram Alpha ba based program. So there is definitely, you know, I think an advantage to the Google Assistant when it comes to the accuracy of your results and how fast it will show those results. But Siri is still a pretty competent assistant. I think Bixby is not really something that I really enjoy. Hi, Bixby on the Samsung Galaxy S9. I tried to activate it, didn't hear me. But this right here just basically adds a complexity to the experience. Yes, Bixby's not hard to use, don't get me wrong, but having two assistants on a phone just why? Why do we have two assistants on a phone? Just I know Samsung's trying to make their own, you know, experience, but if you're going to use Android OS, then keep it Android OS, just put your skin, that's fine. But adding another assistant is like, why don't you just make your own software then and get off of Google's software? Because most people buying an Android phone, whether it's Samsung, LG, whatever, they want to use the Google Assistant. So for Google Assistant versus Siri, I think most would agree Google Assistant is ahead. However, Siri can be very useful specifically on certain things Google Assistant can't do, like turning on your Bluetooth, your Wi-Fi, certain little things like that. Google Assistant just doesn't do the same way as Siri. Okay, so let's discuss animations with the software. I feel like Samsung's animations are just a little swifter than Apple's, meaning quicker. But Apple's, I think, have a little bit of a smoother look to them, just slightly. And uh, Samsung tries to be a little bit quicker on the day-to-day. -day. So sometimes the Samsung 
will, you know, just do this little thing very rarely where it's like it's going faster than the app wants to open. So it you can perceive it as lag, but it's not lag. It's just it's going faster than the Samsung, you know, wants it to go. So I think that the animations on Apple are a little bit more consistent than the Samsung. But overall, if you turn these down to 0.5x on the Samsung, this thing is just a rocket and speed so if you want speed for animations go with samsung they have faster looking animations if you want smooth consistent animations where you actually like to see that animation fly in and fly out then you might want the iphone experience okay so when it comes to both phones let's talk a little bit about their software lag and neither phone has this. Now, people, uh, a lot of Apple fanboys are going to say, yes, Samsung lags because of the old. This is not 2014. This is 2018. Samsung phones do not lag anymore. I repeat, Samsung phones do not lag anymore. Specifically, I'm talking about the latest and greatest S9 and the Note 8 series. For example, 6 gigs of RAM, Snapdragon 835, 845, these things are beasts. And we know Apple doesn't lag either, but some of their older phones are now starting to lag, but not their newer devices. These things are beasts as well. So when it comes to buying these phones in terms of speed and lag, neither are going to disappoint you. You're going to be happy with both. I think the Pixel feels a little faster than all of these, though, when it comes to speed and fluidity and, and all that stuff. It's just feels a little faster on the Pixel, but we're not talking about the Pixel today. And we cannot discuss software without discussing one last aspect before we get to the conclusion, the App Store versus the Play Store. And really, I really like the way the Play Store is laid out. I feel like it's easier to see more apps at once. The card view is nice for Apple, and I think Apple's uh, App Store is very pretty as well. It got a nice update with 11 but at the same time you have to pay for more apps on the apple store so if you're ready to pay for some quality apps go for the iphone you can get more applications free i think on the google play store but the the real thing that i really am upset about is how people the developers seem to favor the iphone experience now i know this is all about money dinero we know what this is about we know that there's more iphone users we know you're going to make more money for the apple device we all got to eat we get that but at the same time, there's millions of users on Android. And even if you charge, I think they would pay for some of these quality apps that you're bringing only to the iPhone. And sometimes applications come first to the iPhone, such as Super Mario Run. That came to the iPhone first. You had to wait months to get this on Android. And I just find that not to be very fair to Android users. So I think if you want applications first, you want to experience the latest and greatest, you have to go with the iPhone. But I think if you want more free applications, more apps, you don't have to pay for things, you might find a little bit better selection for the Play Store. Quality of apps seem to still run better on the iPhone. I just, I just can't deny it there. A lot of applications just seem like they're better designed for the iPhone experience, whereas a lot of them on Android seem like they could use a little work. But the core applications are basically the same, like these Lyft, Airbnb, you know, YouTube, Chrome, you know, these main mainstream applications, they're all basically the same. But I'm talking about a few here and there definitely feel better designed for the iPhone. But Android definitely has a few that are better designed as well. But it just seems like there's a favoritism going on here for developers to the iOS experience. So we have arrived at the final conclusion. Should you buy an Apple iPhone this year when the new ones come out or now whenever you plan on buying one of these two brands or companies devices? And it shouldn't be the obvious reasons like, oh, you get software updates on Apple or you can get customization on the Samsung. Let's take a look at your status in life right now and consider some of these factors that I've taken note about. Are you a busy person who needs a phone to work and you only deal with one app at a time? You need that phone to get out of your way and not really be a distraction to you. I feel like Apple is a winner here in this department. It just It's just too easy to use. Like It's not too easy, but it's so easy to use. And it doesn't really have extra features. It just kind of has what you need. And you don't have to use those features if you don't want to use them. It gets out of the way. You forget you're using an iPhone. You just feel like, that's my phone. Uh, that's how the iPhone works to me. But are you a person who you know is using your phone as your only computing device samsung is your best bet here because if you if you just get a deck station for what is it 100 150 bucks you can turn this thing into a full desktop experience now in the past samsung wasn't able to auto rotate 
their devices. But now you can auto rotate here on the TouchWiz. I know you can say Nova Launcher does this. Of course, other launchers do this, but not every user knows how to download launchers, set those up, tweak their phone like that. You can do this whole rotate thing now like you could do on the pluses before making this even more of a powerhouse little computing device. Are you a person who likes to fit in with the crowd? You don't want to be different. You don't want to use something that everyone's not using. You know Apple is still the way to go here, especially I'm talking about in the U.S. and other countries, Apple is not the most popular device. But here in my country, in the U.S., this is basically the most popular fit-in kind of phone over here. And number four, do you use uh, Google services a lot? Then definitely Samsung's phone is tightly integrated with Android and the Google service system. So, you know, all the Google apps are going to work better and quicker here for Samsung. So if you use Google services a lot, you're going to love the Samsung Galaxy device. It's kind of like you get all those Google services and then you get all of a lot of the benefits you get from an Apple phone, like that beautiful design, a great camera like you get on the iPhone, a beautiful screen, uh, if not most will say better than the iPhone screen, expandable storage, a lot going on here for Samsung's Galaxy S9. But if you like to use a mobile first experience and you already have a MacBook, you already are planning on getting an iPad, things like that, and you wanna use your devices together, Apple is the only way to go here when it comes to their software. So that was part two of should you buy Apple or Samsung. In this video, you learned a lot about the differences in detail with their software, and you probably made a decision by now which one you're gonna go with when it comes to software. But stick around for part three when we discuss the cameras on both Samsung and Apple, and I will be showing samples of both of these devices, not just the Note 8 and the iPhone, all four of these devices right here, so you can see you know, in detail which one has the better camera experience on the day-to-day. -day. And if you found this video helpful, enjoyable, entertaining, informing, do